Yeah, down under it was it wasn't written with a capo on the second fret. It was just written, you know, it was in B minor. So you, know, you just played those played those regular standard tuning and but lately I've been playing it up with a capo just because I like the sound of it. Or just I like this this kind of F. This song came from uh, Ron Streichert uh, having a little cassette tape, and uh, it was on it was on this cassette tape he gave me of ideas, and I loved the I loved those ideas. Um, I wish I still had them, but I don't. Lost them all along the way, but yeah, it was this cassette full of little percussion and bass ideas, really evocative stuff, you know, and and that's. That was one of the great things about that relationship, musically. Um, so, um, so he, so this little piece on the cassette I'd listened to in the car, and it was just kind of went doing to, doing to, doing to, and then it was zig ting ticketum, ricket ticket ticketum, run ticketum, and it was really hypnotic, and um, and I had a phrase in my head that had been. Uh, rummaging around there uh, for a few weeks and it was just living, living in the land down under so I just kind of kept singing that in the car all the way home um, living in the land down under so I thought oh I wonder if that's something and then the next day just the the idea the lyrical idea and the and the the music all came, but it was just, you know, a simple thing, like a little. Traveling in a fried out combi On a hippie trail head full of zombie I met a strange lady, she made me nervous Took me in and gave me breakfast. She said, Do you come from a land down under? Where women glow and men plunder. Can't you hear, can't you hear the thunder? You better run, you better take cover. Yeah, that's the only difference between the verses and the choruses is the this B minor here to the A to the G to the A and then the chorus the only thing is you do different instead of going to the B minor you go to the D because he's And um, yeah, as a lot of people say a lot of things about what the song's about, but it's, it means certain things for me. I think coming to Australia as an as an immigrant, I had this this really um, you know it seemed it was a very awesome place in the true sense of the word. I felt you felt very small. I felt like I was definitely in somebody else's somebody else's house. You know, coming from Scotland, the other side of the world. That's where I'm from in a way, you know, you come to this place and it's hot and it's arid and it's, it's so diff feels so different under your feet, you know, brilliant, but really, but really different. So you kind of, you hack away at that, you know, just trying to get a sense of what that is, you know, just in a musical, in a musical way. I think that when I started working with Ron before Men at Work, that was, we used to kind of play uh, a lot of acoustic music that we made up. And it was kind of meandering and, and, and very sleepy almost, you know. But um, it had a beauty to it, I think. And uh, that's what I think that's what we were trying to get at because he was an, an immigrant as well, or his parents were. And you just have this kind of slightly skewed idea of what, of, of, of how the place feels. That's, 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 that's I think, like, like you're, you know, you're from this place, but you're also not of this place. And uh, anyway, music is always trying to just get get at that somehow. 
So, um, but anyway, the lyrics of the song, you know, I, I was just kind of, and just I was just kind of poking fun at the stereotypical Australian traveling overseas. That's that's is a is a particular kind of character, you know, and it's a stereo it's a stereotype for sure. But you know, those people exist, and there's lots of them. You know, all you don't have to do is go to Bali or go to Earl's Court in London, and you'll you'll see what I mean. <laughs> um, you know, but Australia is a really varied place. It's really full of so many different kinds, kinds of people. But this was kind of, you know, when I first arrived in a, in, a, in, a, in Australia, um, there were these kind of people who were really, I don't know, thoughtful and conscious or something. Like I, I, when I first met Kim Gingell, he was with somebody that I just thought, oh my God, this is somebody that I want to know, you know, really well. And, you know, for a long time, just there was something about them which was had a, a density, you know, or a depth to them, you know. Um, so, uh, so that particular there was a particular kind of Australian when I first arrived who was, you know, quite bullish, you know, and um, brash and kind of very kind of harsh, uh, you know, personality-wise, you know. And um, so I think there was probably a little bit of that in there, you know. Of, Trying to, trying to shine a wee light on that kind of less attractive personality. Um, and the second verse, this friend of mine actually told me that a friend of his had travelled to, to Brussels and tried to speak French to the guy who was selling the bread. And it turns out he was from Brunswick in Melbourne. <laughs> so that's kind of based on a real, a real little story. A real a friend of mine told me. But the... Um, the choruses are really about fear and trepidation at that particular time. Again, I seem to be have a lot of fear about what possibly might happen in the world. Um, and also, you know, this country of Australia that I was in seemed like we were, there were people who were unscrupulous and, you know, um, I, 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 you know, with, with situations like old growth forests and uh, the selling of them or, or um, uh, needless degradation to coastal coastal areas, all kinds of things that that, that I saw, that I thought um, that were spoiling the uniqueness of, of what Australia is, you know, it's such a an amazing place that, you know, 24 million people inherited this whole continent, they get to, they get to live on that, you know, and, and look after it, and at that particular time the choruses were about that, really it was about, you know the plundering, men plundering and women didn't seem to do it, they just seemed to be um, uh, you know, they were they were in another another state altogether, uh, whereas the men always seemed to be there was something ugly going on underneath the surface. Certainly, that's the way I felt at a corporate level and a government level. I didn't trust, I didn't trust trust the government. Not after what happened to Gough Whitlam, you know, that was a kind of a that was a, a period in time, a big punctuation mark for me. And um, and so hence that you better run and take cover. You know, it was also a bit of. You know the feeling that uh, you know the climate idea, which was being talked about back way back then, the 70s and 80s, seemed to me to be un unsustainable. So there was a there was a there was a lot a bit about that in a few songs like down, like Down Under and also Down by the Sea. That was also what I was trying to get at with the the kind of chorus or the B section of that that song as well. But anyway, I've gl I'm glad they've the 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 songs have seemed to have stood some kind of test of time. People write to me a lot and tell me about what they think the songs are about as well. So, who am I to argue? Um, so yeah, but a very important song for me, Down Under. Traveling on a Friday, I'd come back A hippie trail head full of zombies 